Some questions this morning about comments Donald Trump made behind closed doors. The U.S. president told Republican fundraisers that China's premier was paving the way to becoming president for life, and he suggested that the United States might do the same someday. Megan Roberts is following the story for us and joins us now. Take us through what Trump said. Well, he had praise, as you mentioned, for Xi Jinping, who recently made a move to consolidate his power in China. He's trying to eliminate term limits on the presidency. So this was a closed door lunch. It was a fundraiser for Republicans. And Trump was making some remarks at this lunch. CNN actually obtained some tape of what he said, which is how we know about all of this. And at that lunch, he praised Xi. He said that maybe even he should give it a try. Let's listen to some of that tape. She is a great gentleman. He's now president for life. <laughs> no, he's great. He's great. Look, he was able to do that. I think it's great. Maybe we'll have to give that a shot someday. <laughs> So he also called Xi the greatest Chinese president in 100 years, who treated Trump tremendously well during Trump's visit to China in November. But he also had some remarks for Hillary Clinton, saying that she should be investigated after the 2016 election during this lunch. And he said that the system is rigged, something we have heard from him before. So you could hear some laughs and some jeers at that lunch. CNN said that it was certainly a jovial vibe, that there was laughter and there was jokes. but. Those comments aren't always sitting well with everyone right now, John. Still, quite a day, really, because it wasn't the only time that he tried his hand at comedic routines. Uh, he spoke at the Gridiron Dinner, and again, a situation where we don't actually have tape, but walk us through what he said. Absolutely. I'll, I'll do my best to deliver the jokes, John, uh, as best I can, but I'm no stand-up comedian. So this was at a closed-door dinner, as you mentioned, thrown by some powerful Washington journalists. This is an annual event and it is a lighthearted event. There tends to be some musical numbers and some sketches. So Trump tried his hand at a little humor. He had jokes about himself. He had jokes about his family, his staff, and of course he also had some jokes about the Democrats. So here is some of what he said. He talked about Steve Bannon, the former chief strategist. He said, that guy leaked more than the Titanic, a reference to Bannon apparently leaking things to the press. He also referenced some of the turnover at the White House. He said there have been so many people leaving. He said it's chaotic and he said you know I don't mind some of the chaos. It brings up new and interesting ideas but Trump said I don't know who's going to leave next. It could be Steve Miller or it could be Melania, his wife. And that of course seems to be a reference to the fact that there were some questions about them maybe having a rocky relationship after allegations that Trump had an affair. He also had some swipes at the Democrats. He's called Maxine Waters, said she should take an IQ test. And he joked that Elizabeth Warren suggested that the US, Iran and North Korea should quote, smoke a peace pipe, which seems to be a reference to Elizabeth Warren's claims that she has Native American heritage. Of course, he's also called her Pocahontas. And he also took a little jab at himself. He said, you know, my staff wasn't sure that I could deliver jokes like this, but he said, I can, I am the best at self-deprecating humor. You were there, Jeff. I know it was a late I night, was. I'm sure. Thanks for coming and yeah. telling us what happened. What was it like in that room? My pleasure. Well, it was interesting because the president, of course, was there and he didn't come last year uh, to the gridiron dinner or to the White House correspondence dinner. So there were a lot of sort of question marks about how he would handle himself and how he would do when giving his remarks. And he was pretty funny. I mean, there were there were times when he started sort of veering in a direction where I thought, OK, this is where he's going to he's really going to let loose on the media, uh, which he, of course, is prone to do on Twitter. Uh, and at rallies with his supporters. But he didn't really go there last night. Uh, he did, as your correspondent said, make some jokes about himself and about his family, um, as well as some about the press. But in, in general, uh, it was a, at least for President Trump and the media, a fairly respectful uh, tone. As you say, Jeff, this is someone who's referred to the fake media, referred to the media as an enemy of the people. Uh, any optimism that this is the start of a new relationship? You know, it's it's hard to say. You know, he, he did start the day out with a tweet that was critical of the media, saying that the U.S. mainstream media was the laughingstock of the world. So when I saw that, I thought to myself, oh, boy, we're in for it tonight. I wonder what uh, I wonder what that's going to mean. I even wondered if he was going to pull out at the last minute. But he didn't. He did show up. Uh, I think the next sort of question mark will be if he decides to attend the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Uh, but 
But either way, I think regardless of whether he attends these set events, um, his his general rhetoric about the press needs to have uh, a major change. And I just, at least at this point, I don't see that happening. Amidst all the jokes, there was potentially news being made, a uh, suggested meeting uh, with North Korean as a leader Kim Jong-un uh, and wouldn't rule it out. Uh, is that another joke or was that something that people in the room thought, hmm, maybe this is headed somewhere? Well, that was one of the parts where he, can, he appeared to be coming off script and he, was, and he made some news. He said, um, he indicated that North Korea had reached out and that he had said, well, if you want to talk, you have to be denuclear, denuclearized. Uh, and then he said, we'll be meeting with them, which is a pretty declarative statement. Um, so TBD, John, we'll have, to, we'll have to follow up with the White House on that and see exactly what he meant. Um, he has, it's not the first time that he has deliberately not ruled out the possibility of sitting down with Kim Jong-un or having uh, U.S. officials sit down with, with North, Korea, North Korean officials. But um, nothing has happened since. And when there was sort of an attempt for Vice President Mike Pence to reach out to some North Korean officials when they were, when they were all together at the Olympics recently in South Korea, the North Koreans ended up pulling out. It was quite the day for presidential statements, uh, speaking to Republican donors earlier in the day. Uh, praise for China's President Xi Jinping, consolidating power, abolishing term limits, uh, saying the U.S. should give it a shot. Any reaction to that? Well, it's hard to know, apropos whether he's joking or telling, you know, speaking what he really thinks. It's hard to know in that case uh, where that falls on that line. I heard the tape that you played earlier, and, and there was obviously some applause from the crowd, but it sort of sounded like the tone of his voice was joking. I, I don't know the answer. I do know that he has been very opposed to, um, to, to abolishing term limits before. Uh, we did ask Sarah Sanders, I, I did, last week uh, during one of the White House press briefings for a reaction to what President Xi has done in China, and her response to that was, well, that's up to China. Um, so, in general, the White House has already given sort of an imprint of approval uh, to the Chinese, despite some concerns about um, elsewhere among foreign policy analysts and others around the world about what was going on. So I'm not surprised that President Trump was also supportive, but I don't think he means seriously uh, that he would want to do the same thing here. Another big question mark to come out last week in Washington, the issues over uh, increasing tariffs on steel and aluminum. Uh, Canada very concerned, but many Americans are too. How is this threat by the president being taken by Americans and Congress? Well, it depends a little bit on who you are. Certainly people in the steel uh, industry welcomed that. Um, but there are other concerns, uh, many other concerns downstream uh, in, in businesses that are, would be affected by that. And obviously also people who've been watching the stock market. The stock market did not react well to that, which is interesting because President Trump uh, has really made the stock market a referendum on his own success. And, you know, that was, that was not an encouraging sign, I would think, for him, uh, the fact that the market really, really went down after he made those remarks. We'll see what happens this coming week. Um, he did already announce the numbers that he's, he's looking at for tariffs, uh, but they haven't spelled out at the White House or fleshed out exactly how it's going to be implemented, whether any countries or allies would be exempted. Uh, so those are questions that we still have and that they may start to answer uh, in the coming days.